In this video, I would like to discuss the General Chemistry Laboratory Final, which is coming up uh, soon, and what it will look like in a digital format. Um, so the, the exam will be cumulative, um, and it will cover all of the experiments in the semester. So Chem 1 is going to cover experiments 1 to 11, and Chem 2 is going to cover experiments 12 through 20. So um, for Chem 2, you don't have to know the stuff from Chem 1. That's, that's a little different than the lecture. In the lecture, you it's cumulative of the entire year. But um, for the lab, it's cumulative only for the semester, just so that you're aware. So Chem 1 is 1 to 11, Chem 2 is 12 to 20. Now, the exam format will be identical to the lab quizzes. So it's going to be one question at a time. You can flip back and forth if you like, but just remember that doing so will slow you down if it takes some time for the questions to load. Um, so that's that's what it's going to look like uh, with it one question at a time. One slight variation to what we're going to do um, normally is we are going to have some images. Um, if you have technical difficulties opening the images, it's just going to be one image, uh, and this is going to be only for Chem 2, I believe. Um, if there is one for Chem 1, you will the same thing will be true. If, there, if you don't get anything from me, then there was no images. Um, if for the images, occasionally um, Blackboard has had trouble loading images. So what we're going to do is we're going to email you the image that goes along with the question. And the, the title of the image file is going to be what um, question it co corresponds to. So basically it's going to say like, you know, this, this corresponds to um, these questions and, you know, and it'll be obvious in the email what it is. Um, you won't have to open the email unless you have trouble loading the, the image, but um, we're just sending you the image as a backup so that you have that image. Um, and that, that's going to be um, done through Blackboard, um, you know, a little bit before the, the exam time. Um, okay, so the, the test will be two hours long, so you'll have a full two hours, and it's going to be a total of 18 questions. So um, if you think about it, uh, we give you 25 minutes to do five questions for the quizzes. So you're actually kind of um, winning out a little bit here. Um, it, it's going to be uh, 18 questions is about roughly three and a half times um, the the quiz time, but we're giving you four times the amount of time if you think about it, right? So if you multiply, or even a little bit more than that, because it's 25 times four, uh, 25 times four would be less than two hours. So, so you should have more time than you would normally have for a regular quiz. And that's because, you know, with 18 questions, it's a longer exam, and we understand that you might need a little bit more time to complete it than the quizzes, which are a little shorter, you know, in case you run into any technical issues or anything. So relatively speaking, you're going to have more time than you would for a normal quiz to answer the questions. So when will the test be and what will the window look like? So the test is going to be on Wednesday, April 29th, and the window is going to be from 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So because this is a longer test, we're going to give you a longer window. Um, we're going to give you a five-hour window. You can start the test anytime in this window, anytime from 12 to 5. If you start that exam, um, you will have the full two hours, which means that the exam is technically due um, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So if you start it at 5 15 um, and you go past 7 then you then, then, then whatever you did past 7 is not going to be graded so make sure that you start by 5 p.m eastern time if you live in a different time zone make sure that you calculate the time differences carefully okay that's important so there will be 18 questions of the following type so the ones that you're familiar with are numerical input and multiple choice very simple to do now, we're going to add a couple of different um, variations of multiple choice. Um, th they're all very simple to input, no complicated inputs. You're not going to have to do subscripts or anything like that. All simple inputs that are just variations on a theme. So the multiple answer is, is a type of question that's very similar to multiple choice. You're basically going to be presented with a question. Then there are going to be um, answers below that will be like A, B, C, D, E. Um, now, what this will do, though, is this is going to give you check boxes next to the selections. And then the question will say something like 
select all the answers that are true. So you'll have a bunch of statements. It'll be like, you know, the sky is blue, the sun is red, the grass is green, and asphalt is yellow. Select all that are true. And then you'll check all the boxes for the statements that are true, leaving the ones that are false um, unchecked. The way you will know this is that it will say something like select all the answers or select all that apply. Um, and you'll also notice that there will be, instead of just a single selection, you'll be able to click on multiple things. Um, and there'll be little check boxes that will have little check marks in them to note your selections. So it'll be very obvious it should be obviously different from the multiple choice that it's multiple answer. So just make sure you read the questions carefully and that you're sort of mentally prepared that you might have some questions that will ask you to do this. Now, the reason why we selected this is because it's much easier to do this than to do the like A, B, and C, A and B, you know, type thing in the multiple choice. This allows us to, to write a multiple choice where you can pick a few different things. And of course, this allows us to give you some extra um, partial credit because the um, for each one that you select correctly, you'll get some partial credit. Um, so that, that's how that will work. Now, there'll be another type of question that'll be very simpler, simple. Um, this will be called rank order. And it, it'll just basically have a list of different things. It'll say like um, pen, pencil, um, marker, you know, um, and uh, permanent marker. And then it'll say, rank the ones that you liked to write with the most from the most to the least with one being the most and four being the least. And then for each one of those selections, you'd put in a number one, two, three, four from a drop down menu. So it's literally just ranking the order based on a arbitrary number system of one to four. Um, so, so that's how that question will work. And um, the instructions will be there. And it'll say something like, you know, rank the following from strongest to from most likely to react or least likely to react or from um, the strongest acid to the weakest acid or something like that, whatever it might be. Okay, um, fill in the blank. That's pretty obvious. It's very, it's analogous to a numerical input, but in this case, we, we're, we might be looking for a word. So these will be very simple words that you can um, type in and it might be like oxidizing agent and it might just be the word oxidizing or the word reducing. Um, in the fill in the blank selections, there'll be a little parenthesis that comes before it that will basically tell you what options you have to put in. It'll say like oxidizing agent or reducing agent, and you can just copy and paste into the blank, whichever one you think it is. So, you know, you don't have to be like guessing a, a random name or anything like that. It'll be very specific what we want you to put in, um, but it'll just be fill in the blank. Um, and then there's matching. And really what matching is, is it's not matching in the sense of like, you know, like this goes to this, this goes to that. It's just going to be drop down menus. So it's going to say like, um, in this setup, what would be the, um, what would be the, um, what would be the reactant and what would be the product? And we would give you a reaction. And then from the drop down menu, you'd pick a reactant. From the drop down menu, you would pick a product. And then that would be the answer to the question, for example. So um, these are all going to be very simple. The drop down menus um, will have pre, you know, pre existing answers in it. Um, so nothing to worry about there. But I wanted to run you through so just that so that you had an idea. And if you want to look these up in Blackboard, you can just Google Blackboard multi, multiple answer and then you'll actually see what it will look like. Same thing for rank order, fill in the blank and matching. Blackboard has really nice student explanations for how these are going to look so you can kind of familiarize yourself before the exam day. Okay, so now a lot of you are also asking me how do I study for this thing? So the first thing I always put is where can you find problems? Because the best way to study for these things, and in addition to reviewing the material, is to work problems, because these are problem-based tests. So the first and most important place to find problems is the pre and post lab questions on mastering. And you can actually go into mastering and do these in, a, what we, in what's called practice mode, where you basically just redo the questions. And um, that's a great source for, you know, example type problems from um, that might look might be on the, the test. Um, so the pre and post lab questions on mastering are a really good place to start. Another good place to start is the quiz questions. You know, go back and look at your old quiz questions. Look at what we asked. Look at the formatting. 
Um, look at what we emphasize and things like that. What you might find on this final, because it's open book, is there might be a little less emphasis on writing reactions because the reactions are too complicated to write into Blackboard. So I, you, you may not necessarily want to try to memorize all of the reactions in the book because you'll have basically those on hand. Um, but what you might want to look at are questions that really don't involve like rote memorization, um, predicting color changes for semester one, uh, doing calculations for different post labs that required like for the gas laws labs, or in semester two, calculations for the, um, the electrochemical labs and things like that. So calculations, uh, things like, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and then another thing that a lot of students forget about is, you know, you are studying for the lab and this is linked to the lecture. So the end of chapter questions in the textbook are a good source of questions. Um, you know, going back and starting to review for your lecture final uh, coincides with reviewing for your lab final. So that's another good place to look for questions. And then where can I find helpful material to review? Obviously, the lab textbook and the experiments are the prime place to start. So you want to review the pre-lab text. That's kind of like a little summary, uh, almost like a textbook summary of what's going on in the lab. And they have some excellent, excellent um, sample problems that are in there that you'll want to look at. So the pre-labs go over like all the calculations and even some calculations that could be on the quiz or on the final exam, I should say, that may not have actually been in the lab, it's in the lab um, data sheet itself. Obviously, procedures you're going to want to review, like why we did certain steps, how we did certain steps. Why did we use certain pieces of glassware? Um, you know, what were some what were some things that that were important in the experiment? Um, uh, things like that. So you know, the, the those kinds of things. Now for reactions, you don't obviously memorizing the reactions is not so important anymore because you'll have your book with you. However, what you might want to do, and I'm going to talk about this in a second, is create some data sheets for each experiment. So rather than memorizing the reactions, you may want to collate the reactions into a, a summary for the experiment, and then that way you have them in front of you. Uh, color changes, the colors of compounds and things like that are really important. Um, in semester one, this was important for identifying the unknown chloride, iodide, sulfate. Um, those reactions and color changes were important in identifying the, those, those compounds. And then in semester two, we have the quantitative, the qualitative analysis where we have a whole variety of color changes and, and things like that. So knowing what is what is really important in those flow charts to make sure that you can identify something that we give you. But you kind of get the idea, like color changes of reactions or whether a gas is produced, those may be indications that you have a certain type of reaction taking place. And then data analysis. So you, what's a, a good thing to remember is how, how did you do the calculations? Can you run through and do a calculation from a given experiment? Even if we were to extrapolate to like, you know, we did the experiment with some different things. Um, can you do the data analysis, you know, pretty quickly and be able to be pretty flexible with the data analysis? Okay. Um, now my recommendation would be to, um, create some summary sheets for each experiment. So, you know, I will warn you that if you are going to be, do not plan for this test to be flipping through the book a lot. Uh, you're going to have more time, but you're not going to have enough time to be like, oh, this is experiment four. Let me open up to experiment four and try to figure this out right now. If you try to do that, you're, you're going to run out of time on the test. So you have to prepare almost like you were going to be taking this test without your textbook. Now, how do you use the textbook to your advantage? Well, what you can do is you can, as part of your studying, extract out the main ideas from the textbook onto a summary sheet. The summary sheets might be one page back and front or two pages stapled together that sort of boil down the most important things onto a single sheet for reference. And then when you're taking the test, 
you can refer to your summary sheets, which are going to be much more um, condensed than the textbook. Because going to try to find something in the textbook is going to be hard. Um, it's going to take a lot of time. So, you know, this might be a good way for you not only to study, but it might also be a good way for you to make your, your open book, open notes more efficient. One thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to also review the data sheets and the calculations. So go back to the data sheets and look at all the different steps that we do, what calculations are involved, and then also you might want to think about where did those number of significant figures come from? Um, you know, when I'm using a graduated cylinder, how many sig figs do I get? When I'm using a burette, how many sig figs do I get? So on and so forth. And finally, a good thing to remember is that studying for the lab coincides with studying for the lecture. So for each lab, you may want to go and review your lecture notes that are related to the topics, like gas laws. Um, this might be a good time, since there are a lot of gas laws experiments in the first semester, to go back and review gas laws in general, just your class notes on gas laws. How do I do Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure? For semester two, the same thing kind of goes. Electrochemistry is a, a big topic toward the end. Review your ele notes on electrochemistry. Review your notes on reaction rates in equilibrium. Um, review your acid-base notes. Those are all big topics that come up in the second semester. Um, in the first semester, it's mostly gas laws, metathesis reactions, really important. Um, and in, toward the end, there is a little bit of um, thermodynamics, which you'll want to review also. That's important. Okay, guys, so I hope this sort of answers your questions and gives you an overview of, of how to prepare for the upcoming lab final. Um, if you have any questions, contact your section instructors, and we will be ready to go for the lab final on Wednesday at 12 p.m.